Let's talk about Trevor Lawrence and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Right now, this franchise is in a very interesting situation. They are a year removed from when they made the NFL playoffs. They defeat the Los Angeles Chargers in great fashion. They had an amazing comeback victory. But a year removed from that, they started 8-3, and three, and everything looked good with this team. They had a tough loss against San Francisco 489ers. The offensive line was not ready for prime time. Trevor Lawrence got hurt against the Cincinnati Bengals on a Monday night football game. He hurts his ankle. The Jaguars lose that game. And they will go on a long losing streak after that game. And Trevor Lawrence did not look the same. Now, Trevor Lawrence suffered that nasty, gruesome ankle injury, but it wasn't serious. It was just a regular sprain. But he continued to play every single week. Trevor Lawrence can be in the same conversation with guys like Joe Burrow and Josh Allen. The problem is, it's the turnovers. And this is a make or break year for Trevor Lawrence and this team. I'm not saying if they're not successful for this upcoming season, they have to move off of Trevor Lawrence. Because Trevor Lawrence is not their biggest problem right now. It's the play calling and the consistent play of the defense, especially the passing defense. Now, Trevor Lawrence has not lived up to that hype of being that top first overall pick like how he was a couple of years ago, but it hasn't all been on Trevor Lawrence. You look at his numbers this season, 21 passing touchdowns or 14 interceptions, you may say, hey, this kid is a turnover machine. Half of that is true, the other half is not, because when you look at this team on film, it was so many times to where it was miscommunication with the wide receivers. Let's take it back to week two against the Kansas City Chiefs. Trevor Lawrence is throwing dimes straight into the red zone. They can't put their feet down. From Calvin Ridley to Christian Kirk, he's throwing deep bombs across the middle of the field. They're dropping passes. For the first eight weeks, they were top of the league in drops. You're not going to be able to go out there and be a successful team if you can't figure out the easy things. They make the easy things hard with this team. And they have done that since Trevor Lawrence's rookie season. And now Trevor Lawrence will go out there, he'll throw some interceptions, and he'll fumble the football. It makes you scratch your head and say, what was he thinking? Why is he not going down? And how did he fumble the football like how he did against the Baltimore Ravens? And that is true. But at the same time, Trevor Lawrence did not hire Urban Meyer. And I still think some of that is carrying over right now from his rookie season. The rookie season is the most important season for any player, especially a quarterback. And you want to put them in the best situation possible. Jacksonville Jaguars not do that. Urban Meyer will go down as one of the worst NFL head coaches of all time. College-wise, he'll go down as one of the best. NFL-wise, he was just terrible. He didn't even last a full season. He was horrible. And it really hurt Trevor Lawrence's development. But in his second year with Doug Peterson, a guy that's been to the Super Bowl, a guy that's won a Super Bowl with the Philadelphia Eagles, with Nick Foles and Carson Wentz, he came over. This team went 9-8. and eight. They went to the NFL playoffs. They defeated the Los Angeles Chargers, and they looked good. But it was a consistency after that. They were not able to keep that hot streak going for too much longer in the regular season. They started 8-3 and three this season, and they ended being 9-8. and eight. And a part of that are because of the injuries to Christian Kirk. He missed some time dealing with a core injury and because Trevor Lawrence wasn't the same quarterback. You can go back and look on film. He was not step up, stepping up into the pocket and he was throwing off his back foot even more than he does when he's fully healthy. The footwork was not the same. He was playing injured. He's a tough quarterback. And I do think that Trevor Lawrence is the right quarterback of this team. He just has to put it all together. And it comes down to Press Taylor, who is the offensive play caller with this team. Some Jacksonville Jaguar fans wanted to see him leave after this season. They want to see him fired. The hard part with that is this. From Trevor Lawrence's first year, you had Urban Meyer. Then you changed to Doug Peterson. That's two coaching changes within two years. If you move off of Press Taylor, there's three different offensive play callers back to back to back. And Doug Peterson does have a heavy set on calling plays. I fully understand that. But you want to keep the same coaches around this guy early in his career. So it's not that much of a turnaround. We've seen other quarterbacks deal with different coordinators, it seems like, every single year. Baker Mayfield is one of those guys. He struggled early on, and right now he's having a lot of success. The Jacksonville Jaguars is trying to keep everything intact because if you continue to change coaches, you may change philosophies, and he may not fit the philosophy that one coach is looking for, and it may tone down Trevor Lawrence. But right now, Trevor Lawrence does have to play better, and the coaching has to be better as well. Two things can be true. Trevor Lawrence has been very underwhelming, and the Jacksonville Jaguars have not helped him out to that next level. And both of those things are true right now. I'm not saying that he'll never be a top five to top two quarterback I think that he can be a very good quarterback with this team it just comes down to being consistent and making some of those throws as well and for the wide receivers to step up they traded for Calvin Ridley Calvin Ridley had over a thousand yards receiving this season he did not stay with this team he's now with the Tennessee Titans and Calvin Ridley was a vital part to this team but at the same time he had a lot of miscommunication with Trevor Lawrence early on in the season you do bring in a guy like Gabe Davis Gabe Davis is not a number one wide receiver 
Christian Kirk is still going to be your number one wide receiver if he can stay fully healthy like how he was a year ago when he had over 1,000 yards receiving. The thing is with Gabe Davis, he'll have some moments that make you shake your head and say, Gabe Davis is a true baller. Then he'll have moments where he drops the football that'll go for an interception and you'll shake your head and say, why is he on the field? 45 receptions for 746 receiving yards and seven receiving touchdowns. He's a solid veteran to have, and I think that he'll be a very good wide receiver. Did they overpay for him? Yes, but I think that he'll be a very solid wide receiver with this team. You're pairing him up with Christian Kirk, like I mentioned before, is a true number one wide receiver with this team, and you also have Zay Jones as well. Zay Jones did not have a great season this season. Just a year before, he had over 800 yards receiving. This season, he was playing with a knee brace. He missed some time. He was not able to get in full gear. He's not able to run those double routes and run the post routes down the field. So when, like I mentioned before early in this video, the fact that they were 8-3 and three to start the season and they were dealing with all these injuries is crazy. Just eventually, things are going to fall off the tracks, and they did. And Zay Jones is a key wide receiver, Trevor Lawrence, because he has a great rapport with Christian Kirk and with Zay Jones, Zay Jones on the season had 34 catches for 321 receiving yards, two receiving touchdowns. And like I mentioned before, he was limited dealing with that knee injury. He had a big knee brace on. He's not able to cut in and out of routes, and he probably shouldn't have played this season. You can say the same thing about Trevor Lawrence in the back half of the season. They possibly should have set him down for two to three weeks and didn't get him to going into the right situation. The problem with sitting Trevor Lawrence, they're in the thick of things. If you sit down Trevor Lawrence for those games, you automatically fall back in your division to a, a team like the Houston Texans to the Indianapolis Colts. If they were to defeat the Tennessee Titans, they would have went in, into the NFL playoffs and possibly been in a better situation. But on the back half of the season, they were not good at all. And a lot of it was due to coaching and the injuries as a whole. So hopefully they can stay healthy. But do not be surprised if this team, if they try to go out there and draft the wide receiver between rounds one through three to help Trevor Lawrence out to the next level. Because Trevor Lawrence's contract is coming up sooner than later. But they do have Travis Etienne, who's been a very good running back with this team. He missed all his rookie season dealing with a Liz Frank injury to his foot. But on the season, he had 1,008 rushing yards and 11 rushing touchdowns he's a very good running back of this team and you have tank bisbee as well tank bisbee is just a guy that's going to come in and get you two to three yards when you need the most he's a very big physical running back he's not going to have the same burst and the same speed as a guy like travis Etienne, but he's a solid backup to have so you don't have to go out there and touch a running back in the nfl draft the offensive line is solid but it could be better anton harrison did have some moments this season that made you say okay there's something there and he could be a top tackle in the nfl he had a lot of struggles this season but this is a guy that went out there and he looked very good in the back half of the season and I like his game you still have guys on the interior like Mitch Morse at the center spot that you just brought in from the Buffalo Bills who is going to help out this offense line to the next degree the Buffalo Bills cut him because they have to go out there and save some cast space this is still a top center in the NFL and you have Brandon Scherf at the right guard position as well he's a veteran he's on the back end of his career but he's better than most guards in the NFL and you still have Cam Robinson at the left tackle position as well so the offensive line should be better this season than it was last season. It just comes down to Trevor Lawrence and the play calling for Press Taylor. And I mentioned before, the defense of this team, you add in Eric Armstead, he's not going to go out there and get you double-digit sacks in the season. Five sacks in the season, a very good defensive lineman that's going to go out there and stop the run and push the pocket towards the passer. And that's something that they desperately need with this team. Because you have him, you also have Josh Allen and Trayvon Walker. Josh Allen this season had a crazy season. Josh Allen was one of the best pass rushers in the AFC this season. He has 17 and a half sacks, two forced fumbles, and one interception. He came out of nowhere. The last couple of years, he's been a very solid pass rusher with this team. But this season, he completely popped off. Josh Allen, if he continues to this play at this level for the next couple of years, he's going to be a franchise defensive player with this team for years to come. And it wasn't like he was just going back there and getting cleanup sacks. He was busting through offensive linemen. And it also benefited from Trayvon Walker as well. Trayvon Walker, his rookie season, did not, did not have those many sacks on the season. But this season, 10 sacks, and he can go back there, flip back into coverage, and can, can get some interceptions as well. He's a freakish defensive lineman. So you have a very strong defense right now in terms of the defensive front. They can go out there and stop the run. They can push the passer. I mean, you look at their rushing defense this season. They were ninth in rushing defense. Their rushing defense did not let them down. And you have Devin Lloyd as well, who is a very good linebacker with this team. Devin Lloyd, you can make the case, is the best linebacker with this team. Did have a down year this year, but that's why you're bringing in a brand new defensive coordinator. Because a lot of guys this season, besides Josh Allen and Trayvon Walker, 
they declined in production. And Devin Lloyd was one of those guys. But he's a very good linebacker with this team. Now, the secondary. You cut Darius Williams because you have to go out there and save some money. Darius Williams was the best corner with this team this season. You look at a guy in Tyson Campbell. Tyson Campbell, very good rookie season. He was in the same conversation with guys like Sauce Garner and the same conversation with guys like Pastor Tan. This season, he did not look as good. He gave up a lot of big plays, and especially in that Cincinnati Bengals game as well. From that point on from the season, he did not look good. It could have been a sophomore slump, but I'm hoping that he can return back to that rookie form. And the brand new defensive coordinator could come in. They could figure those things out. I think that he can be a top corner with this team once again. But I am worried about their secondary as a whole. You did bring in Darnell Savage. Darnell Savage, solid safety from the Green Bay Packers. He has some good moments. He's a very versatile player in the secondary. And you bring in Ronald Darby as well. Ronald Darby is not the same corner that he was four to five years ago. But he's a solid veteran to have with this team. The Jacksonville Jaguars are also in the tough division. You have the Houston Texans with C.J. Shroud right now. They're going to be a tough team to beat. The Indianapolis Colts are there. They're a huge question mark with what they have with Anthony Richardson. And then you have that rushing attack with Zach Moss and Jonathan Taylor, but lucky enough for the Jaguars, they can stop the run. Then you also have the Tennessee Titans right now. They're trying to rebuild some things going into their favor with Will Levis. Is he their guy? Is he not their guy? But right now, look at the Jacksonville Jaguars. They can be a top-tier team in the AFC. I'm going to stand on that point. I think that they can be a tough team to beat. Like I mentioned before, they were 8-3, and three, and they would have beat the Kansas City Chiefs. It was three plays to where Trevor Lawrence is delivering the football on the money and they're either dropping the football, they cannot get their feet down in the red zone. If they can clean up those things, this could be a tough football team to beat. But this is definitely a make or break season for Trevor Lawrence and the Jacksonville Jaguars. If they are not successful this season, something has to give. And I don't see them moving off of Trevor Lawrence. This is a team that was ecstatic a couple years ago to just draft Trevor Lawrence in the first place. And his second year, he looked very good. We may see them move off of Doug Peterson for this upcoming season if they're not able to stay successful. But like I mentioned before, a lot of miscommunication and a lot of injuries did hurt this team but let me know in the comment section below how do you guys feel about the jacksonville jaguars and are they a true threat in the afc if you're new to the channel hit the subscribe button if you like the video hit the like button most importantly when each and every last when guys stay safe stay positive thanks for watching the video guys god bless peace